everybody. It's uh, Michael J. Burns here from Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Oklahoma, coming to you live on this Wednesday. Today is July the 6th, 2022. And of course, it's time for God's Healing Word, coming to you live over Facebook Live and rebroadcast it on several other platforms. We have it on our Twitter page. We'll have it after this broadcast. We'll have it on our Getter page, our LinkedIn page, our Truth Social page, our uh, YouTube channel. And of course, we have two other Facebook pages we'll be putting it on as well. And so this is a great day to be alive and active in the things of Almighty God. Can you say amen, somebody? Let me put up here on the screen uh, ways you can make contact with our ministry. You know, my wife and I, we were pastors for 38, 35 years in Long Island, New York, after graduating uh, from Rama back in 1981. We, uh, pa I pastored from 85, 84, actually, until, well, I started in 83, so I enjoyed 84, we incorporated into this church, but went all the way through to September 2018, and have entered into a new phase of life and ministry that involves itinerary, traveling ministry, book writing. We have several on the market right now, and we have more to publish still. Plus, we have our social media, which you're enjoying at this very moment today. And so I'm excited about all that we're going to have for you on uh, today's broadcast. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hey, uh, visit our website. There's freebies there, all kinds of audios, links to our YouTube channel with over 250 now. Uh, free videos for you to enjoy. We also have uh, our e-newsletter archives as well as way a way you can sign up for our current e-newsletter. Plus, you know, we have a free uh, MJB Ministries mobile app that I'm sure if you were looking over, you'd want to get it for all the free stuff we have available to you. The good thing about an app is you can get it and then delete it if you don't like it. <laughs> and so let's see, the same thing's true with our newsletter, but I'm telling you, we have one of the best e-newsletters uh, that we send out every single month, and I'm telling you, you can enjoy it. Uh, we have our archives there. We're waiting till Monday. We should have the uh, May and the June one up there, but we have about 15 or so of the others up there right now that I know you're gonna uh, be happy to avail yourself to. Let's have a word of prayer right now. As we get into the teaching of uh, God's holy written word uh, today, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the privilege of digging deep into the things of God. We'll be teaching today about having faith in the power of God, in your power. And I'm asking you today to think through my mind and speak through my lips to these, your people. I pray today that you'll cause their ears to be listening, their minds to be open, and their hearts to be receptive to the things both of the Word and of the Spirit of Almighty God. And Father God, I thank you today for the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit, for the power that we'll be talking about tonight, that's God's power, that it will be in demonstration and in manifestation in this broadcast tonight. Father, we have faith in you. And we have faith in your ability, faith in your power. And we thank you today that it has been unleashed upon us and within us. And we release it even today on behalf of people who have needs, believing you for signs, wonders, and miracles, and even diverse gifts of the Holy Spirit as you will these things. And for everything that will be said, done, revealed, or manifested, I covenant with you now to give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, and thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everybody who agreed with me said, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I'm excited about getting into the teaching tonight, and I'm sure uh, you are as well. And uh, we're going to get right into it. So I want you, if you have your Bibles today, uh, to open up in the scriptures with me, if you will, to uh, look the third chapter, Luke chapter three and verse 21. Now we're going to start here because, well, let me uh, say something before we turn to the scripture. We started, yes, on Monday talking about first Corinthians two verses four and five that clearly tell us that God doesn't want our faith to be in the wisdom of men, but in his power, faith in the power of almighty God. And so we are clear about that. 
And we don't want to take anything away from what we've already said about that already. Now, we also made comment about Jesus that in his earthly ministry, he never did one miracle, one healing, anything. Uh, as the son of God, he did him as the son of man who had to be anointed by the spirit of God. That's why there's no recorded miracles of Jesus until after he was baptized in water by John. And that's what we're about to read here in Luke, the third chapter. And I'd love for you to turn there with me or look at it on the screen right now. It says here in Luke 3, verse 21 and 22, When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody today? Praise God forevermore. Amen. Well, thank God that Jesus followed the instructions of his father uh, to be water baptized as a prerequisite for him entering into his ministry. As a matter of fact, in Luke, the fourth chapter, uh, it tells us something in the first two verses that not only did the Holy Spirit come upon him, but Jesus, it says, after he was baptized, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan, which was the river he was baptized in, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, why? Well, it was there in the wilderness that he was being tempted for 40 days by the devil and that those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when he had uh, they they had ended, he was hungry. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? I tell you what, if I fasted for 40 days or you did, I'm sure we'd all be a little hungry. We'd be hungry if we fast for an hour, much less 40 days. But Jesus, we know in the scripture is telling us that uh, he was filled with, with the Spirit. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to go into any kind of temptation without being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because it, he is the Holy Spirit. He'll keep you from yielding to temptation and the test that the enemy will try to bring your way. And so we see that Jesus went into the wilderness. And why didn't he do it when he was 16 years of age? Uh, well, because at this point now, he's anointed. He wasn't anointed at 16 years of age. And let me tell you what the anointing can do. The Bible says in Isaiah 10, verse 27, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit destroys yokes and removes burdens, praise God. Well, what yokes are those? What burdens are those? Those are the things that come from Satan himself. That's why yesterday we read from Acts 10, 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Literally, it says they're under the tyranny of the devil. The devil's a tyrant. And Jesus was anointed to destroy the yoke of sin, of sickness and disease, of fear, of poverty, of lack over the lives of the people. And thank God he did that. But here's the key. You have to mix the word of God with faith. That's what he, uh, Hebrews chapter four, verse number two tells us. And it talks about how the children of Israel had the gospel. The good news was preached to, to well, to us, uh, the writer says, as well as unto them, meaning the children of Israel. <clears throat> but the word which they heard did not profit them. Listen, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Can I get a good hearty? Amen from somebody. You know, you have to mix faith with the word of God in order for the word of God to uh, have its impact in your life. Praise God. And so it's important today that you and I understand uh, this great truth. Now, let me take you down in verse in chapter four, which we just got done reading the first couple of verses from about Jesus going into the temptation of being tempted by the devil. But the Bible says, when he returned, he returned differently than when he went in. He returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, I want you to notice something. Jesus went into the temptation being filled with the Spirit, but when he returned after he passed the temptation, he returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, uh, he came to Galilee, and news of him went out 
<clears throat> throughout all the Sharanan region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. <clears throat> so he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now, I want you to notice something. The Bible seems to indicate here that Jesus had a habit. It wasn't smoking. It wasn't drinking. It wasn't watching pornography. It wasn't any of the things that many people are in, are in the habit of doing. He was in the habit of going to church, going to synagogue. And I tell you, he set the example for you and for me, and we ought to be people who are in the habit of going to the house of Almighty God. But then it goes on to say in verse 17, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. In other words, he's about to read these verses. And he reads from Isaiah 61 in the first verse, he reads on down, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, good news to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. Can I get an amen from somebody here today? Glory to God. And then it says, uh, he came to set at liberty or to set free those who are oppressed and in verse number 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is talking about the year of Jubilee. Can I get an amen? Now, listen, the year of Jubilee is a very special time. It's when all debts were canceled, when everything went back to the original owner, praise God. And it not only worked naturally, but it also worked spiritually. Let me tell you, sin went back to its original owner, which was the devil. Sickness went back to the original owner, which is the devil. And all that he has, poverty and lack and fear and all the torments he tries to bring, addictions and things. In the year of Jubilee, which we are now living in a perpetual year of Jubilee, all that the devil has tried to give to the world, they may still be under his tyranny, but you and I, as born-again believers, we're no longer under that tyranny. We are now free Indeed, praise God, because we're living in a year of Jubilee where everything is going back to the original owner, not just naturally, as I said, which it does, but also spiritually. The devil is a spiritual father of sin, of sickness, of disease, of poverty, of lack, of fear, of addictions, of all those things, depression. He is the originator or the father of it and went back to him. Glory be to God forevermore. I don't know about you, but I'm preaching myself happy right now. And I'm about to have me a shouting fit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And you ought to be shouting, praising God too, my friends, because this is exactly what the word of God is teaching us. Well, listen, Jesus then got up in verse 20 of Luke 4 and said, then he closed the book where he just read from Isaiah 61. And the Bible says, uh, and the eyes of all of them were fixed on him. Oh, I like that. And the Bible says, listen, and he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a powerful, bold statement that the Lord Jesus is making uh in the scriptures here, he's saying that I am now the fulfillment of what Isaiah prophesied. Now, if uh, if he's the fulfillment of it, glory to God, then we ought to pay attention to the things he's going to say. Now, let's read in uh, Luke, the uh, fifth chapter, Luke chapter five. Uh, and here's what the scripture actually says here. Now, let me read this verse here. Jesus, we know, is now anointed because he said he was. And uh, this is why after Jesus was done ministering, people still wanted to touch him or have him touch them. Why? Because they believed that he was anointed. He was anointed. But look what it says here in Luke 5, verse number 15. This is powerful here. It says, however, uh, the report went around concerning him all the more. What report? That he was anointed. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. I want you to notice the two words here, hear and be healed. 
Glory to God. Let me tell you something, my friend. If you want to uh, be healed, you're going to have to be willing to hear something. You know, I mean, no person goes under medical care, it, it gets a prescription without the doctor first telling them what they have, or they uh, diagnose them with. And number two, what the medication they're going to take will do, what the effects of the medication will be, or if they're going to have to have a surgery, or where they're going to have to have the surgery, or what part of their body, and what their recovery time will be. I mean, they they people will hear all of that information from the natural side, from medical personnel, doctors, and staff. But here's the thing. You have to be willing to hear what God has said in his word. Why do I say that? Well, if you look with me here in Luke uh, chapter 6, and I'm going to just read uh, this to you. I wrote this down for your benefit. And we're going to look at these verses in a moment. But uh, you must hear in order to access the power of God. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, this is something you need to clearly understand. Faith is the factor that both releases and receives the power of God. Faith is the factor that releases and receives the power of Almighty God. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody here today? Now, I want you to think about what it says here in Luke chapter 6 and uh, verse number 17. Where did that verse go? Luke 6. Uh, where, where did that go here? Verse. Well, let me read verse uh, Verse 5. Verse, let me go back to Luke 5, verse 15. And this is what it says here. It says that uh, the people came together to hear him and to be healed by him of their diseases. Now, Luke 5, 17, I'm going to look at verse seven, uh, verse from chapter 6, verse 17. I don't know if I have time to look at it today, but maybe tomorrow. But it says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, Jesus was teaching here, uh, that as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and there were doctors of the law sitting by. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says, what happened? It says they came together to do what? To hear him and to be healed by him of their diseases. Praise God. To be healed of him by him of their diseases. Now, and it says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So, while his power was present to heal multitudes of people, he came, the Bible says here, to do what? To heal not only the people in general, but even those who are Pharisees and teachers of the law. People that were religious, God in his mercy was willing to demonstrate to them his great power and his great mercy. And I'm telling you something, my friend, this is something that we need to really grasp is that God is willing to heal those people. Now in Luke 5, 17, it says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Not only the general crowd that was there, but also specifically the Pharisees and the teachers of the Mosaic law. I'm telling you, this is incredible. Do you know that even though the power of the Lord was present to heal them, as Fred Price used to say, them didn't get healed. <laughs> those Pharisees didn't open their hearts to receive. Those doctors of the, of the Mosaic law did not open up their heart to receive, and they went without. Now, we'll look at it tomorrow, but you'll begin to see that there was a woman who had an issue of blood in Luke, the eighth chapter, that pressed in, and she began to touch the hem of his garment and drew on the power of God. We're talking about about not only about faith in the power of God, but this teaching is called God's healing touch. She touched Jesus' his garment, and which was on him, and he was anointed. And that anointing she drew and got access by faith in the power of God. So much so that there was a multitude of people touching him, but that woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus with faith. And I'm telling you something, my friend, you cannot touch the Lord with your faith and not draw the supernatural power of God into your physical body. Praise God for more. Now, it's important that you understand that God's power can be present and people still not receive from God. 
And that's not what God wants. He wants his power to be present and his power wants to accomplish something. And I'm telling you something right now, my friend, the power of God is here right now, right where you're watching me on your computer, on your smartphone. It doesn't matter. Maybe you broadcast it to your television set or on your computer, whatever it is, God's power is right where you are. And it's supernatural power. It's actually the Greek word dunamis. And it's the word that means inherent power or potential power, like a stick of dynamite. It's power that's explosive in its potential. And this power, my friend, if you're born again, is already on the inside of you and can drive out cancer. It can drive out diabetes. It can drive out coronary artery disease, heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease. It can uh, drive out pancreatic diseases. It can... Uh, dissolve uh, tumors and growths in your body and your brain. Uh, it can cause your blood to become purified. It can even drive out AIDS diseases, disease, the disease known as age acquired immune deficiency syndrome. That same power, my friend, is here right now, right where you are. And I want you to begin to lift your hands and I want you to begin to say, Father, I believe and I have faith in the power of God. I have faith in your power, Father God, that that power is in me, that that power is working in me. And I command your body right now in the name of Jesus, as we read in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, I command your body to be healed. I command the pain to leave you. I command the symptoms in your body to cease and desist in their actions and their maneuvers against you. I command your body to be healed, the cells of your body to be healed, the organs of your body to be supernaturally healed, the systems of your body to be supernaturally healed right now in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and say, Father, I receive it in my body right now in the name of Jesus. And I give you thanks and I give you praise for it. Oh, glory to God forever. I believe that after this broadcast, we're going to have some tremendous testimonies that are going to be coming forth uh, from people today. Praise God. And I want you to let us know what God has done in your life today. Praise God. Now, I want to tell you something. We've been sharing about this, but I have a book, my first book that I wrote called Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, Dare to Make a Difference. And uh, this is a book that you can get at all. Uh, we have a separate website called churchhappensbook.com that has this book as well as it has this other book here uh, called Church Happens. Both of them are found at churchhappens.com. These are our, web this is our, one of our websites. And you can get either of these books right there uh, available uh, as, I, as I've said today. Now, this book, Discover the Life, I wrote is my first book, and I wrote it after I led my biological father to Christ, who I hadn't seen in nearly 38 years, and God supernaturally reintroduced me to my father, who was an alcoholic man, and God used me to be the answer to my own prayer. This book will share the, the step-by-step -step that I took, that God worked in my life over the course of time, and will inspire you to have faith in your own life or whatever challenges that you might be facing. Now, I told you already that we have this other book called Church Happens, and I want you to realize that this is a book I wrote for pastors to give to their congregations. Now, if you don't want to wait for your pastor to order this book, then go ahead and you can order it directly uh, from churchhappensbook.com. Now, I will say this, for every pastor who's watching me right now, I want to send you a free copy of this book by a PDF file. So if you go to churchhappensbook.com, Pastor, and you scroll down and you'll see this uh, book cover there, underneath it, you'll see I'm a pastor. Click on that, fill in your name and email address, and I will email you a copy of, uh, of Church Happens, what your pastor needs, from the people they lead. It's absolutely free. It'll come with a book ordering discount chart. If you decide you like it and you want to order copies for your membership and for those who will be first time guests in your church. Praise God. Now, I want to tell you something else. We've been sharing about this, but when we travel, 
as the Lord opens doors for us and we're booking right now, we do have many, many openings and we want to fill our schedule, not just for the sake of filling it, but because we really want to help churches and we want to help people. And I have a seminar I do. It's a Saturday morning, four hour seminar on discover the life you were born to live. It comes with a book and with a companion study guide, which is itself like 90 pages with fill in the blanks, true and false, multiple choice questions, all kinds of stuff in there that is based chapter on chapter of the book and will help people to engage the process of discovering the life they were born to live. If you're a pastor and you want me to come for this, go ahead and go to go to uh, mjbministries.org forward slash invite and you can book us to come and we'll be happy to speak to you, answer any questions you have. The cost of the seminar, is, as you see on the right-hand side, is $30 per person to attend. Now that's $25 for the two books and $5 for lunch because we do have a lunch break. And uh, we give that money, that $5 per person to the church in order to help them uh, to provide the lunch for the people who will attend this seminar. I'm excited about it, and I know that many of you are as well. Praise God. So visit mjbministries.org forward slash invite to book today. Now, when we do come for this seminar, we'd like to state, as the Lord uh, is you know, opening these doors up for us, to stay minister powerfully on Sunday morning to your church on its services, and then host a miracle and healing service on Sunday night if you feel that uh, it would be appropriate and a witness in your heart to do that. We would like to stay for that particular outreach. You know, I was healed of seven strokes uh, six years ago last last week. I was uh, the two, I had six strokes. I have one coming up on the 30th in 2016. In July 30th, I had a seventh stroke, but God has raised me up and made me whole. And, I, and we have functioning and flowing in this strong healing uh, anointing, praise God. My wife even received a creative miracle of new teeth, and we have seen some of the most outstanding miracles take place. So we like to stay for Sunday morning and Sunday night, along with this four-hour seminar. Please consider uh, also uh, downloading our free live praise and worship album. Uh, these are songs that I received from the Lord many years ago, and uh, there are 13 songs. One of them is a spontaneous praise and worship part where we just sing unto the Lord. It's powerful. I've had people tell me they've gotten so blessed by the presence of God. These are all original songs produced by my dearest friend who's in heaven now, Randy Estelle. And I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed if you download this album. We only have it available digitally now, and you can get it from iTunes or wherever you buy your digital music. Search for Let Your Glory for This House by me, Michael J. Burns. My wife sings beautifully on it. We have many others that sing, and I'm telling you, you will be greatly blessed. Praise God forevermore. Well, I certainly love you, and I know that God loves you. And uh, I know that you're going to have an awesome, awesome day. We just want to let you know that uh, we want to thank you for joining us today. And we hope to see you tomorrow on Thursday where we'll continue this series on faith in the power of God. Can you say amen? Praise God.